decades, we have been struggling mightily against a regime that calls for our destruction. And it pursues nuclear weapons in order to achieve our destruction. Others' destruction, too, but first ours. It is a, a vital interest for other countries, the United States, the Europeans, many others, the Arabs, in my opinion, the Chinese and the Russians as well. But for us, it's a matter of our existence. And the international community has placed demands on Iran to cease and desist the building of capabilities to produce atomic bombs that will threaten us and threaten the peace of the world. They put together a sanctions regime that has brought Iran to its knees, crippling sanctions. The purpose of those sanctions was to get Iran to dismantle, dismantle its nuclear enrichment capabilities, which are used for atomic bombs, and its heavy water plutonium reactor, which is used for atomic bombs. This is what the sanctions are for. They're not for preventing civilian nuclear energy or medical isotopes. I suppose Iran is building those ICBMs in order to launch medical isotopes to the Iranian patients orbiting the Earth. It is to prevent fissile material. That's the material that you put inside an atomic bomb that's what those sanctions were about. To dismantle the centrifuge installations, underground military installations, centrifuge halls, and the plutonium reactor. Now there's a deal. Why the Iranians came to deal is obvious. Because the sanctions are biting, biting their economy crippling that regime. So they came to the table, because they have to. And what is being offered now, and I'm continuously updated in detail, I know whereof I speak. What is being proposed now is a deal in which Iran retains all of that capacity. Not one centrifuge is dismantled, not one. Iran gets to keep tons of low enriched uranium and they can take these centrifuges, which are not dismantled, in the halls underground, which are not dismantled, using advanced centrifuges that they've already installed, some of them, that are not dismantled, and they can rush within a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, that's all, and create at their time, the time of their choosing the fissile material for a bomb. Iran does not... <laughs> when the Jewish people... ...on matters relating to our survival, you know what happened. This is different. We are the Jewish state. We are charged with defending ourselves and we are charged with speaking up. And it is time now to speak up. All of us, all of us have to stand up now and be counted. I can think of nothing that is as important and is crucial. We shall continue to work with the rest of the world, and it's good that we have now a few days, because this is not only in the interest of Israel. This is in the interest of the entire world. Yes, we speak up, but I think there are other nations in this region, and perhaps beyond, 
who can now unite and say, we do not want a nuclear Iran, and we stand together to make sure that Iran dismantles its enrichment capacities, its heavy water plutonium reactor, all the things that they need to make nuclear weapons. They're not entitled to it, and it is possible right now, given the precariousness and vulnerability of the Iranian economy, to press forward the demand for Iran to dismantle its nuclear bomb-making capacity. That's what I expect from every one of you. And I know it's achievable. And it's important. I know that there have been many times that we have uh, stood together. You have stood together with us. I have to stand more comfortably. Well, I have a list of all the people who are here. And I want to acknowledge all of you, my dear friends. First of all, my friend of many, many decades, Michael Siegel. Michael, you are a true champion of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. And Didi Feinberg, and Jerry Silverman, and Michael and Susie Gelman, and Ronnie Dweck, and uh, recently elected mayor of Jerusalem, Nir Barkat, doing a great job. Well, one mayor deserves another, Michael Nutter of Philadelphia. Welcome. Well, I know something about Philadelphia. It's the city of brotherly love. We're all brothers and sisters here in a common cause. So welcome back to Jerusalem, all of you. Now, every five, year, every five years, the uh, Jewish federations convene the General Assembly here in Israel. Well, that's a fact. <laughs> you've come here in good times, and you've come here in difficult times. You've come here when we have faced violence and terrorism. You kept on coming. And so I'm very glad to welcome you here. And you demonstrate by doing this to the entire world, that there is a, a vibrant, united Jewish world. And that is exemplified first by the tremendous bond between Israel and the Jewish communities of the United States and Canada. You are our partners, you are our brothers and sisters, and we are one big Jewish family. And like all families, we have to face challenges together. That's what families do. I mentioned Iran, and I mentioned those ICBMs. Who do you think Iran is using? What is Iran targeting, rather, when it's building those ICBMs? Not us. They already have rockets to reach us and missiles. They need those ICBMs to reach North America. It'll take him a few years, not many, by the way. And they could be nuclear-tipped ICBMs. That's the plan. Coming to a theater near you. You want that? I don't hear you. Well, do something about it. We are. This is the greatest threat. I began with it. I continue with it. Iran must end enrichment at all levels because they don't need it. They must end, they must take out from their territory all the fissile material. They must stop the construction of the heavy water reactor in Iraq, and Iran must dismantle the considerable military nuclear infrastructure, including the underground facilities and the advanced centrifuges. It's not my position. This has been the position of the international community. I stress it again. 
So here's what you see over time. What you see is as you go from 2005, 2004, Iran is steadily building its nuclear weapons capability, and the international community is steadily diminishing and reducing its demands. It's almost a perfect scissors movement. That's the bad news. The good news is that parallel to the increase in Iranian capabilities, just to give you an idea, they had, I think in 2005, around 170 centrifuges. You know how many they have today? About 18,000. That's not a 100% increase. It's a 100-fold increase. This in the face of all international resolutions. That's not surprising because this is a regime that in the face of all international resolutions murders tens of thousands of innocent people, including children, in Syria. It participates. It keeps Assad going. There is no Assad regime. There's an Iranian-propped Assad regime. It's a regime that practices terror as we speak on five continents, a regime that supplies Hamas and, world, and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah with endless rockets to fire on Israeli civilians, a regime that remains committed to our destruction and subverts just about every single country in the Middle East, and let me tell you, beyond the Middle East. It's a regime that tries to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington and sends its killers either directly or through its proxy Hezbollah to Bangkok, to Nigeria, to Bulgaria, everywhere. This regime cannot be allowed to have nuclear weapons. It's a historical pivot. So the good news is that the international community did do something powerful. And the powerful thing was to get those sanctions that followed Iran's building of its capabilities. And now, when Iran is on the ropes, now when Iran has to come to negotiate, now when Iran understands that if they don't make a real compromise, they'll get more sanctions, now you let it out? Now you say, well, if we don't acquiesce to their demands, they'll continue? They can't continue because their economy will collapse. And even if they do, they'll maintain their capabilities now. I always said that the combination of crippling sanctions and a military option, that has the power to stop Iran. And everything I see tells me that. I think it's important to have steady nerves and a firm purpose and stop this program. We can do it. In any case, you know that the idea of the Jewish state and the purpose of the Jewish state is to enable Jews to defend themselves. This is something that we could not do before we had the Jewish state, but we can do it now and we shall always always defend ourselves and defend our state.